Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Easy Tech Support and on today's video we'll be talking about how Sentinel-1 image can be utilized for doing the flood analysis. So as we all know that Himachal Pradesh was hit by the heavy rainfall on 8th and 9th of July 2023 and today is 17th of July 2023 and in this particular example as you can see in my screen that this is of the Himachal Pradesh flood July 2023 and the flood timeline is 2023 July 9 to today is July 17 so from this analysis we can see that around 411 square kilometer of uh, flood of the area is flooded and we can also calculate that how much cropland is affected here from this result we can see that around 110 square kilometers of area that is cropland has been inundated which is very very serious and also we can see that we can also calculate that 1485 hectares of a built up area is affected and around a population of 83,000 peoples have been affected by this flood and the various data sets like FAO global administrative unit layers has been utilized to calculate uh, this analysis and Sentinel-1 SAR GRD uh, data has been utilized JRC global surface water mapping layers has been utilized and similarly others and you can see there that we can also put the legend what each of these items are showcasing and on the layers panel we can see the various uh, uh, various layers that is being produced here so on the basis of these various layers we can see various changes happening okay so this is region of our region of interest and this is before the flood sentinel image okay this is going to take some time so you can see before the flood event the sentinel image used to be like this and after the flood so you can see the change right there are more darker pixels okay so on the basis of these the differences we are going to calculate the area flooded area can be calculated on the basis of pixel to pixel comparison and similarly this used to be the permanent water and you can see there are certain dark pixels that are the flood okay similarly you can you can play around i'll be providing this code in my website you can see here this is tech guru guides our website and uh, i have already posted the tutorial video of the same and here you can see, you can find the code so you can try out so now we'll be talking about how this analysis are being done code by code line by line but this is going to be a a bit longer video so i will be splitting this video into two so there will be two blog posts uh, so please feel free to check them out now let's just go through each lines so this this code is actually made by Yen spider well i edited this code so we will be selecting the himachal pradesh from global administrative unit layers so steps two would be up all about data sets and filtering to region of interest and date so we'll be filtering the sentinel one image by this filter bounds so our region of interest and uh, and we will be filtering various uh, various properties like instrument mode will be iw and similarly we will be we will be more interested to take out uh, into account transmitter receiver polarization that would be the polarization will be vertical center and horizontal receiver uh, so that kind of polarization will be selected and the orbit properties pass would be descending or ascending so you can uncomment the first one if uh, your region of interest contains more ascending image so you can uncomment this one and if your region of interest is going to uh, have more number of uh, descending image, then you are going to uncomment the first one. 
So I have put this uh, for your optional case, for your region of interest. So we'll be selecting, we'll be more interested for resolution uh, of 10 meters. And we'll be selecting the V as polarization. It's already defined here. So uh, here we'll be defining the variable that is going to collect the Sentinel-1 collections before the flood uh, event has happened. And for the variable after collection images, it would be defining after the flood events and that collections would be stored to after collection images variable. So by this code line, uh, actually we want to see whether the images are present uh, in that particular date or not. So this would be going to print in the console as you can see here that we can see here that number of images before collection are 21 elements are present. And here also we can confirm that number of images after collection are just three images are present here. So this is how we are going to see whether there is, uh, there is the image present uh, before the analysis is being done. So we are confirming that and this would be adding the layers before collection layer and after collection layer. Here you can see in the layer tab. So let me just uncheck this. So up to now, we have defined the region of interest. Then we have also defined before floods image collections. The mosaic would be generated of 21 elements that were present on those dates. So this is the before the flood events uh, collection and this is going to be the after the flood image collections. Now let's go to the flood extent, step three. How much area is being affected by the flood? So for doing the same, we'll first be applying the speckle filter as you know that from the theory itself, the Sentinel-1 image, there is already uh, thermal noise being removed, radiometric calibration done, terrain corrections has been applied. So when we go to the band, we can see that the minimum and the maximum value. So we are now using the VH polarizations. So this is minimum, minimum would be minus 50 and the maximum would be 1. So resolution of 10 meter and units is decibel. So now from this particular code, we can see that this after collection images has been applied with the speckle filtering of focal median that would be taking the taking the taking into consideration the neighboring pixels value and on the basis of the neighboring pixel value, the center value is being fixed. So that is how the salt and paper effect is being removed here. So this speckle filtering has been applied to after collection images and also it has been applied to before collection images. And in this particular code, we can see that after collection filtered images is being divided by before collection filter images. So why this is done? Let's just recap some theory. So as we know that the after the flood, the area is being inundated. So it means that the area is now smooth, smooth because of a water surface. So when the sensor is going to produce the pulses and going to send it to the earth, then the earth uh, surface that is now covered with the water is going to reflect that radar data elsewhere so backscattering that is going to receive by the sensor now would be less so when there is a so there is less decibel unit for after collection images and there is much more for the before collection images so we can now know that after collection uh, value is from minus 50 to 1 and also the before collection is minus 50 to 1 so after collection let's say it would be minus 25 uh, back scattering has been re uh, received by the sensor and before collections it would be more so uh, let's say it is minus 10 so minus 25 divided by minus 10 would be 2.5 
So on the basis of the same, we will be going to calculate how much area is being inundated here. So we will be applying the threshold as well. If that difference data is going to be greater than 1.25, then it is we can we can conclude that that area is being flooded. That pixel is being flawed. Okay. So this is how the difference is being applied and the difference threshold is being used. So difference dot GT. GT means greater than differential threshold 1.25. As I already said that 2.5 uh, 2.5 is now greater than 1.25. So it is going to uh, rename that particular pixel to water and it is going to self mask. So water would be now 1 and non water pixel would be 0. This is how this calculation is being done here. So now after calculating this initial flawed estimate, we also now would be requiring that uh, as we all know that there is already permanent sources of water. So we need to mask out these permanent sources. So I will be using the JRC data. So you can search here the JRC data and learn much more about the what this JRC global surface water mapping layers really means. So I will be selecting the seasonality band and uh, seasonality band is all about uh, the months. So if the pixel has some value uh, that is uh, like greater than 10 months. Okay, so greater than 10. So I am particularly interested uh, to store those pixel value for my permanent water variable. So on the basis of same, I, I am having now the permanent water pixels. Now, how much area is being flooded? So it would be differentiating the permanent water. It need to mask out those permanent water. So on the basis of a where function, that if the permanent water is zero, we are going to obtain the flooded pixel. This now, this flooded pixels is not containing the permanent water. So I am also now on the from this line. I'll be adding the layers for the permanent water if I require to do so. So you can see in this layer that there is permanent water present here. So this is going to take time, uh, take some time. So we'll be now moving to the hydro set data. Uh, this is also well known that uh, if uh, there is a higher slope, there is less chance that area would be flooded. So we would be uh, setting this slope threshold to 5% if uh, there is some pixels, flooded pixels that is greater than 5%, those data would be masked out. On the basis of hydro set data, so you can check that what hydro set data means from here. So uh, please do that. So on the basis of the same, we'll be calculating the slope and uh, this slope, okay, this slope, if greater than slope, slope threshold, if there is some area that is greater than 5% slope, those area would be marked out. And here you can see from this code, we have updated the mask and the slope of less than 5% is of 5% can be inundated. So now we have removed a, a greater than 5% slope areas. Also, there would be some scenario, certain pixels, uh, like let's say eight pixels or 32 pixels uh, that is present in uh, in particular area uh, would be representing the flood area. Only those eight or 32 pixels will be representing the flood area. That might be also error because that is very, very small. Okay. And we will be masking out those errors from these code snippets. And now finally, we'll be calculating the flood extent area and flood extent area can be calculated here from this multiply. And uh, this would be uh, calculating the pixel area and we'll be using the reducer sum and geometry would be our region of interest. And as we can see the scale, the scale has been defined to 10, which is the Sentinel, Sentinel one resolutions. As you can see that we have filter out the resolution of 10 meters. 
so this would be the 10 and uh, we can also set uh, define the maximum pixels one is uh, one to the power of 12 or uh, we can set it to the best effort to the, to the true if we set it to the best effort true then it is going to calculate uh, calculate the flawed extent area very quickly so that is uh, that might be having some error so if we be if we would be defining the maximum pixel area to 1 is to 2 uh, 1 is to 10 to the power 12 then it is going to calculate uh, the pixel area the flooded area with more accuracy so this is how it is being done so here we have calculated uh, the flawed area and this flawed area data is being stored in a water pixels so here we are getting all the water pixels and these water pixels is being divided by 10,000 because we want to convert these meter squares data into hectares. So this would be applying the uh, round, rounding off. So there would be a rounded value. So we would now be printing our flooded area. So this flooded area is being printed here. In this particular video, we have defined our region of interest and we have now selected before flood floods collection and after floods image collections is being uh, being defined here the permanent water source is also being defined the steep areas is also being defined disconnected areas that is isolated pixels is being defined here and on the basis of the same we have calculated the flood extent how much area is being flooded has been calculated this is all for this video but stay tuned for our next video where we will be calculating the various areas being affected so we have now calculated the flood extent here we can see that we will be doing the damage assessment how much cropland area is being affected how much built up area is being affected and how much populations are being affected by this flood event so those kind of uh, uh, applications is would be talked in our next video so stay tuned please do like comment and subscribe to our channel easy tech support thank you